Welcome back to another episode of Card Talk, a podcast where we spend a little bit of time talking about cards from Lord of the Rings, the card game. I'm your host, Dave Walsh. And I'm Grant Thompson, just along for the ride. And today we're talking about Pippin from the Black Riders box set. Uh, he is a six cost, two willpower, one attack, one defense. I like Pippin. One poet who <laughs> has the text. Each enemy in play gets plus one engagement cost for each Hobbit hero you control. Response, after you engage an enemy with an engagement cost higher than your threat, draw a card. I like so, Pippin. So how do you feel about the people's <laughs> that wise <laughs> um, not ability-wise, because ability-wise is phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, stat-wise, I think that he is what he is. He's a two hit point hero, so it's, he's really squishy for a hero, but he has six you know, he he's a six threat hero which is is pretty low um and it kind of he fits into that whole hobbit thing and he's also in sphere for a lot of those hobbit buff cards like um like fast hitch and and um in the shadows and things like that that uh, really really help out a hobbit deck so um, and also the new Gaffer Gamgee, you know, where you can engage somebody and, yeah. um, and, and yeah. yeah, and then not have to worry about his attack, uh, the enemy's attack. So, um, his stats are not very good for a hero, but for a six threat cost hero and a hobbit hero, I think he's fine. I, I I think he's he's good. He he's my quester whenever I'm doing um whenever I'm running my Black Riders Hobbit deck. So you know, he's uh he's pretty good. He's so. brilliant. I love Pippin. I just it's that automatic obviously after you play a core set you get used to the nasty treacheries that deal direct damage to exhausted characters. And after you get one of them, if you don't have access to healing on your board, you don't quest with him after he's already taken a point of damage. That's just asking for trouble. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and I found that he's really good with healing herbs. You put the healing herbs on him, and you're not losing a lot um, by putting healing herbs on him, and you have to exhaust him and discard the healing herbs to heal all the all the damage. I mean, so you're not losing a ton of willpower if you're going to use healing herbs. Yeah. Um, I just find that hobbits in general, barring Sam and Tom Cotton, um, are just dead squishy. <laughs> Fatty's not Her squishy, which is kind of funny. Fatty's got three hit points too. <laughs> yeah. Um, in Spirit Frodo. Spirit Frodo's definitely not squishy. I know what you mean though. Like, that's just... It, it's a hero with with ally stats. Yeah, um, like chump blocker yeah. stats almost. <laughs> they're like the epit. I think they're like the epitome of Brock Ironfist stat wise. That <laughs> <laughs> like, but like I say, I love um, Pippin. If I'm running a Hobbit deck, I'm generally ru running Pippin. Yeah, you I know, mean this. Um, Falco plus Pippin has that engagement cost raising and the ability to draw a card when you engage an enemy with higher threat. He's just, in that sense, he's the best. But in terms of stats, he's just like the mech hero. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think in terms of ability, he's he is top tier. Um, and that first, that first line about enemies getting... A plus one engagement cost. There are there's more times when I am playing this guy that I, I need that <laughs> more than I think. Like you think, oh, I'll just engage a guy. Even playing solo, you know, you engage a guy, or you know, like waiting a turn may be the best thing, and you, you can't because you have to. That happens more often in the game than you'd think. Even st with starting threat 
uh, something super low, like 20 or, uh, you know, 21, 22, whatever it is. Um, I say 20 because the, the three and the black riders, um, add up to 20. So it's, but you know, I think that that, um, that first ability there where he gets plus one engagement cost for each Hobbit hero, that is awesome. And yeah, and especially it, if you're playing Saga, that's like plus four engagement if you're controlling four Hobbits. Right. If you're playing solo in the Hobbit quest or in the in the um, campaign, um, and then you have and you're playing the Frodo Hobbits, uh, the Frodo quests. That's plus four, and that's a ton. You know, that's that's the hill troll going up from thirty to thirty four. Um, not that the hill troll is in the campaigns, but that's, uh, you know, that's the type of thing, you know, like everybody oh, says wow. that 30 is really the threshold, but to get that, those couple extra rounds there provided no other shenanigans happen like that is really what seals the deal. Yeah. And then that response. Wow. The response about having to draw a card or being able to draw a card that yeah. is awesome too. Like that, the the whole let's get it out on the table that whole mechanic of hobbits being able to take advantage of engaging creatures with threat higher than their uh, with engagement cost higher than their threat is phenomenal to me that is the that's the that's the real thematic home run of the hobbits so you have like tom cotton and you have um you have pippin and you have um sam you have all these hobbits that do all these these awesome awesome things and that drawing of a card is so helpful so helpful so you're not top deck in the whole game even if you have no other card draw like this just totally helps, helps this out. version of Pippin is how I think Lord Bilbo should have been <laughs> oh really yeah well obviously Pippin gets so much love because of the way he was designed now, I think going back to the Hunt for Gollum, where you get that nine cost low Bilbo, and you're just getting an extra card a turn. Um, and I think if they'd made him worth the nine threat cost, he would probably be just as good as um, Pippin. But that's. We, I think, they've seen how they went wrong with Low Bilbo, and they thought, right, well, how do we make it better? And that's what they did with him. <laughs> right. So, I mean, you can have a a um, a lore Hobbit lineup, which people don't really talk about a ton. But if you if you you had Falco, Pippin, and Bilbo, that's nine, seven, and six, so thirteen, twenty-two. But then each so you're starting out at 19 because Falco's ability, you know, and then if you're playing solo, you're questing pretty well to begin with for hobbits. Um, you're also drawing two, at least two cards around because of Frodo's ability. Um, and so maybe that's a nice little lineup. Plus you have natural threat reduction because Falco is um, you can discard him to reduce your threat by seven, and then he's in sphere. Not that this shows about Falco, but he, he's in sphere for bringing him back for House of Healing. Um, so I don't know. I mean, Mary, Mary is a great card draw mechanic for the Hobbits. I think Mary is a better card draw. Um, uh, Pippin, Pippin, Pippin. <laughs> <laughs> Mary is no card draw for hobbits. Um but no, Pippin is is probably a better card draw mechanic um than Bilbo. Eh, maybe not solo. But I think in in two in multiplayer I think Pippin is a better because you can engage and so I, I remember back, do you remember the episode with Chad Garlinghouse? Yes, I do. Right? So he said one of the best heroes is somebody else playing um, Lore Pippin. You know, so I think that when you have Haldir on the board, 
and you're playing Lore Pippin, like th that's a great combination. Or somebody's playing some Archer, you can engage all the all the enemies and draw all the cards, and then. <laughs> well, you can't. You can only gauge one per round unless you have Halberat or something. But you know, but that's the thing. And so you can get that card draw, and then you can let the other person kill him. You know, and that's kind of what we do in in, in the campaign that I have. Somebody, the the guy across the table from me has um, has Legolas hero, so he's able to to pick him off and you know do all that good stuff. So I really, I really think that this hero is right on the mark. He's not awesome like Sam, but he's pretty, pretty good. Oh, definitely. I and am. He, he's super. I think he's niche. Sam. The reason why I like Sam is because Sam can go into any, any deck. He can be splashed. But here, in order to take maximum, um, in order to have maximum effectiveness, effectiveness, you need to put Pippin into a Hobbit deck. Yes, definitely. Pippin is definitely designed for a Hobbit deck. Right. He's not designed as a splash hero. No. Um, seeing that, I think you've just set yourself a new challenge there, David. <laughs> <laughs> what? A, a solo lore? Hobbit deck. Oh, Hobbit deck. I'm still trying to figure out my tactics, Hobbit deck. <laughs> Which is technically more lore than it is tactics. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. I'm at my first iteration. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to record the the redo of the of the tactics deck. So wow. kind of go through the whole thought process. Okay, fair enough. But, <laughs> but, um, but it did beat Journey down the Anduin like yeah. crazy. Like it really beat up on the Hill Troll, um, and I was happy to see that. But it, and then I played it against a couple other things, and it just lost miserably. So. That's when I posted it and was like, here. And so the community had some really great ideas, and I have some really great ideas. But the the biggest great idea was to get rid of all the lore cards in my tactics deck. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, um, Pippin, on a whole, that first light, like first couple of lines for the engagement cost is key for why this character is so brilliant. Um. Obviously, we've already stated going through, uh, even going through any of the Saga boxes with either Bilbo from the Hobbit set or even um, the Frodo from the Lord of the Rings Saga expansion are going to, he's going to work great in. Um, but obviously, you need to keep in mind that you need to build around um, hobbits for them to take absolute effectiveness. So yeah, and uh, then you have you have cards that go with them, like in the shadow. Yeah. Um, so I, I think have, if you're running an old hobbit deck, I think um, in the shadow is let's see, it's that's a lore card that that um, reduces an attacking enemy's um, attack and defense by one, right? As long as its engagement card is, is engagement cost is higher than your threat. Yes, it gets minus one on each. For each Hobbit hero, right, or something uh, like that. Roll the cost to play in the shadows by one for each Hobbit or Ranger character hero you control. Um, it's a combat action. Each enemy engaged with you, with an engagement cost higher than your threat, gets minus one attack and minus one defense until the end of the phase. Right, so I mean that's in sphere, and you know you take a a fairly bad enemy, and you can you can kind of neuter it with with this, you know, as long as it's not unique enemy, you know, um, or not unique um, immune enemy um, for free, as long as you're playing a Hobbit deck, which if you're playing Pippin, you are. I think that this is this is a card that is that goes into that deck pretty. Um, Pretty nice, pretty nicely. Yeah, uh, take no notice is actually quite nice as well. Yeah, take no notice. Um, I find that card kind of is a panic button more than anything when I've played my Hobbit decks, because um, that in 
doesn't that increase the the cost, the engagement cost of? Yeah, it increases the engagement cost um, of each enemy by five. End of the road. Right, and it's also another one that's free within lore. Um, With um, Hobbital Rangers, it reduces its cost. Right, 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 right. And so, I mean, this I find with um, <coughs> uh, with with Lore Pippin kind of d almost doesn't need. It's kind of like you're doubling up. Um, and so I, I have a tendency to, to cut, take no notice from my Hobbit decks, um, if I'm running Lore Pippin because of, because it's kind of a double edged sword there, unless you know that you have something really bad coming out. Um, it's, it's good. Um, it, I, I think that this card you wouldn't play, <laughs> um, with it, but that's just me. I mean, I'm a mediocre yeah. at best deck builder, so as everybody has found out. Because <laughs> um, obviously, if you're running, say, just the three hobbits, normal, like a normal scenario, right? Uh, and you are it somehow managed to get up to, say, 30 threat in the engagement of the hill troll, and you need to say, look, I can't, it, or up to 33 threat deal with that hill troll and you've got no way of doing it and you, it's just a quick emergency right well i'm not engaging on this round threat the 38 or whatever it is mm -hmm. uh, yeah i mean it's a, it's like an emergency button but i think hobbit sense is a better emergency button than um than that um drinking songs also very good to play with any hobbits oh yeah 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 if you're playing a hobbit deck drinking song is the uh, if you have access to lore, you know, I think that that's, and that I like drinking song because it's just having a unique Hobbit character. You, yeah. you know, it doesn't even have to be a Hobbit deck where you're running that. Um, and it's cost is spot on. <laughs> yeah, it's like free <laughs> <laughs> Right. So, um... you know, so, I mean, in terms of like killer combos, I think that Mary, not Mary, Pippin is, um, or at least Lore Pippin, really should be run in a Hobbit deck. And so okay. outside of a Hobbit deck, I don't think he has as much effectiveness, unless you're trying to get really low, um, you know, like Falco and Merland, you know, like you're trying to get really low lore starting. But I don't know why you'd want to do that anyways. Um. I can't think of a reason. Not with the three heroes, anyway. <laughs> right. I mean, fair enough if one of them happened to be Elrond, or, say, Sam, for example, and just dropping your overall, or Bilbo, dropping your threat just down a couple of pegs. Right. Like, but putting those three together just doesn't quite seem to work out in my <laughs> mind. Yeah. Um, I think we're a long way from a... Um, mono lore hobbit deck that's viable <laughs> but i'll try i'll try something i'll put something <laughs> out after i get my tactics hobbit deck figured out i'll get a mono lore tactics or mono mono lore tactics deck <laughs> a mono lore um hobbit deck. hobbit deck figured out i'll see what i can do um you've got, you've got access to advanced notice <laughs> yeah right okay so are we ready to ring pippin um, I felt like there was one other thing. Oh, I really like this Pippin's card art. The card art that this Pippin has is phenomenal. I really like it. It he looks halflingish, but he looks like adventurish. Also, yeah. I don't know if, if, if adventurish yeah. is a word, but you know, like he it, he looks like he's already kind of you know weather worn and you know looking off into the distance seeing what is out there like i just really like the card art and this reminds me of how pippin should have looked in the books rather than how he looked in the portrayal on done by um oh, by jackson um in the lord of the rings films he looks much more the part of pippin than what Jackson portrayed him because in the films, I think Jackson, he looked has a lot of inspiration drawn from Peter Jackson's. 
I think that that picture does. I mean, that's my opinion. But, um, but in Peter Jackson's films, not that they're not brilliant, I love them, but um, the show Pippin in Mary is pretty much foolish and idiotic where Pippin had a lot of knowledge of the land where he came from, which is shown in the books, which wasn't actually shown in the film so much, and they kind of left part of his character aside and just focused on the comic relief element of Pippin. Mm -hmm. Whereas this shows him, right, okay, so I know we're here, so it'll be about three, another three or four miles that way. That's the way I'm getting it from the vibe I'm getting from that picture. Yeah, I mean, he, he looks very... He reminds me of, like, the way Bilbo would have looked after coming back from Erebor. You know, he's yeah. got it's got his cloaks. He's got like he looks like he's a well, well versed traveler. I don't know. Yeah, but like I say, the art for me reminds us of Pippin from the book, not so much from Jackson's film. Right. Okay, so should we ring this guy? Let's ring him. Okay, so for the audience out there that doesn't know, we haven't. A highly scientific yet arbitrary system where we ring these uh, cards on a scale from one to ten, where one is the best card in the game, the one ring or the one card to rule them all, and then um, where ten is the worst card in the game. So um, we've only had a couple of ones, and we've only had one ten as far as I know. Um, oh. So <laughs> right. So uh, Grant, what do you think? I'm rating right number two. A two. Why a two? He's brilliant for what he does. He's. I don't look at him from. Because I don't only play him in a Hobbit deck. I wouldn't look at him outside the Hobbit deck. So I'm rating him a two because inside that Hobbit deck, he's brilliant. He's access to natural card draw. You don't have to worry about putting any more card draw in unless you need it. Like, just standard card draw. And his ability to engage um, of a higher engagement cost, higher the engagement cost of the encounter deck, is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Well, I agree with with you on on most counts. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to give him a oh. I'm bouncing back and forth between a couple of numbers here, um, but I oh, think. Oh. <laughs> I can't do halves, you know me. Uh, I think I think that Pippin has to get a a three. His ability, in my opinion, his ability is is phenomenal, but he's very limited to just Hobbit decks, and I don't think that he's a must-have in Hobbit decks, even with the expanded card pool. I think that you know you can you can get access to lore using other things. I mean, I hate to say it, but you know, Lord Bilbo is an option. Um, <laughs> you know, so I I don't think he's a must-have in those Hobbit decks, but I think um, his low his low threat cost and his two or his response and his active ability is just phenomenal enough to to keep him at a three. So that is Lore Pippin, and join us again as we tackle more cards from the game. Have a great day, everybody. And if you're interested in finding this or any of our back episodes of Card Talk, feel free to search YouTube where you can find our flagship video episodes with the username Card Talk 2018. Or you can search the RSS feed, cardtalk2018.libsyn.org, for our extended audio versions of our podcast. Or you can find us on Facebook at Card Talk 2018. And if you have any questions for Grant or myself or for both of us, feel free to email us at cardtalk2018 at gmail.com.